Hello everyone, welcome to another Unreal Engine video. And I think we're going to take a look at modifying or migrating over our damage system. That way we can redo it so it's more of a network replicated going forward. So if you're new here, welcome. If you're rejoining, glad to have you back. And so to get started here, now I haven't actually created the damage system yet, but I did want to make a few notes before we started here. I did move these structures that I mentioned in the last video, these linking structures. I called them, I now I'll call them whatever uh, table and then linker just because. Um, and so this will take like whatever the ID is and then whatever the primary data asset is here. And then I also renamed these from PDA to DA, which makes more sense because that's what you're actually inserting. So now when we look into the actual like primary data asset here, we can see we have root data, which has random random stuff that we have we have animation which we can plug in our custom animation data asset here if we want to pull it from a different data asset and then we have the same thing for the ability as well so that's just a few notes that i wanted to make before we get started and so i think for the damage system what we'll probably do is create something similar to this for damage and then we'll just apply it to the ability and then when we spawn in the ability we can just simply pass that data through do our RPC calls on our on hit events, send it back to the player, and then send it into a new component, which is probably gonna be something along the lines of like a health component or like a status effect component, something along those lines. Basically something to handle all of our status effects, but we should be able to attach this component to let's say like a block or turret, for example, or anything that's damageable. So I'd say let's get started with the database here. Uh, and we'll, we will need two, because we'll need the damage type, which is a custom Unreal Engine thing. We'll have that similar setup to how these abilities are set up, where, or these ability structures, where we'll have a damage type class here and root data. So that's what I'm thinking. And then those, we'll have to create those actual objects. Then those objects will have to pass through into our component where we can do a bunch of the RPC calls and things like that to handle our damage. We'll multicast the status updates, for example, for health. If we're modifying health, we just multiply, we multicast the health update and that should be good to go. So let's get started. Got a basic structure here, and this is going to hold our damage type class along with the root data. This is going to be a damage type of a class object. This is a built-in Unreal Engine thing. This is meant for when we want to deal damage, we can pass it through, see here. So these are gonna be the two variables. I don't know if we'll need any more. Uh, obviously the struct here is for that reason where we can put in more, more variables if we need to modify. I've got the, the interface for the database here, PDA and the find. This should be in type ID. It's really easy once you create one of those databases, you can just copy them but you'll have to make sure to uh, rename everything properly. Sometimes it'll get mixed up. I've had that happen a few times. It can be a little annoying to debug, but it's fine. And then, oh, well, of course it'll break these links, but it's fine, it's all good. And then of course we have the find implemented. We have the as implemented here for self. We have the data that's set up for our structure with a string for IDs. And so this should be good enough to handle the damage types. We'll just have to actually create the data asset and plug in a few damage types. So we'll need to create a damage type class and we'll need to create an interface to go along with it. That's going to pull the damage, basically. So when you want to deal fire damage, we're not pulling from damage types. We're going to be pulling from the damage itself when we do the damage calls. Right. Okay. So let's move on. I will set up a damage type class here with the interface, and then we'll just create this. Uh... All right. I ended up creating the damage database, although I didn't fill it out here. Uh, the damage data. So there's going to be two folders. There's damage type and there's damage. I created the uh, corresponding linking here. So there's damage type, and then there's actually damage here. So the damage one, the actual damage one, is going to be used in our damage type class. 
And that's how we're gonna get the get the damage we're gonna do through our component. All these do are they just point to the various uh primary data assets. Like before this one. This one's the data type, so this one points to the data type. And then the damage one obviously points to the damage one. Now these will be helpful for when we have to build out our structures or our other databases here. So for damage type, I did add one of these. So we have now damage type class of this damage type default in here. And this damage type default lives now over in this other folder I created. So we have a base and then a damage type interface. So the interface here has the as, and then it has a get damage linker. So this is going to be our, our actual damage damage. But this is going to be the linking structure because this is going to hold the primary data asset and the ID that we want to query that data asset from or query the ID from that data asset. So then in the actual damage type, and remember the damage types here, they're actually a special class. They're not, they're not, um, they're damage type. They're actually special classes here that under objects. And so under here, we implement the two get and the as, and all this is going to do is just hold a damage linker. So now when we see here in the variables list, we can put an ID and then we can put the data asset. We don't have a damaged data asset yet. So this will just be blank. So that will, and then the action or the abilities now, the ability structure would be updated. Now it takes in our damage types. So what happens here is the, dam the ability is going to fire off. It's going to take the damage type. It's going to pass that data that we get out of this this linker which is going to be the damage type we're going to pass that into the deal damage because that's going to have this is going to have our damage type class that we're going to use and then in our component we're going to extract the data from this damage type using the interface to then query the database that's stored inside of these objects to then spawn our damage as simple as that. I think we also need some gameplay tags because if we want to do status effects, I think the easiest way would be to through gameplay tags. But yeah, let's do that. We will need to make some changes to the ability actor here because we need to set some data for when we deal the damage. So the damage will be coming from the damage type data. So in the interface for our ability actor we've got this set damage type data and it's going to take in our structure of damage type data and name damage type data and now the implementation of this is just going to be the interface it's going to implement that and it's going to make a server call to set this variable now we don't need this multicasted we'll run it on the client because the server is the only one that cares about the damage the client's just going to get notified of the damage that's it in this case so whenever we want to just set it, we just set it through a server call. Easy, easy stuff there. So that'll be available for when we want to deal the damage. Now in our component, in the component, when we spawn in the ability, right? Because we're taking in our action data, we, we have this ability structure, the linking structure here. And that's going to grab the, the ability here with the ability data in the ability data it's going to have our now damage type linker I should probably rename these to linker as well oh well we can pull that off break it and then we can query for the damage type and then after we spawn it we can do the interface call off of this spawn actor for our ability actor just check to check to see if the object is valid if it's valid, we're going to go ahead and just set the damage type data. And then I'm just going to print out a string here. And we can see when we spawn something in, we can see pew, and then spawned and set damage type data. So now that's all that's left is to handle the on hit events and actually just deal the damage.
after a bit of uh, fiddling around here, um, I think I got a decent start on dealing damage here. So I did think about it a bit, and I think we're going to add the damage properties to the type data. So, you know, like your base damage, ignore self, AoE, range, regular range, things like that are going to get stuffed into this ability type or damage types. Uh, because it seems like the code will be a lot easier to handle if it's in this class instead of in the ability data. Like I think the ability data should just handle most of the, like the 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 spawning logic, while the damage handles or the damage type handles the damage types. So base damage and ignore self here for now. Um, so that's what I got here. I didn't change any of the other ones. I did make a changes to this ability class. So the ability interface now, we set damage type data, takes in an instigator actor. So this is going to be our owner of our ability, so our player character, basically. This is what's going to get passed in. I've got an activate here. It doesn't take in any inputs or outputs. And I've got the destroy here, which um, doesn't take any inputs or outputs. In our base ability here, I went ahead and added the implementation for this. So the set here, set damage type, is going to go to the go to a server call, run on server reliable. The same thing is going to happen with this activate. It's just going to run a server call, but instead of um, this is actually going to run this function here. So this function is going to be an empty function. And what this one's going to do is we're going to override this in the base class. So now when we run this activate function, we will be able to have it specific to our implementation. And then we have the classic destroy here. So that, yeah, the server activate is run on server reliable. And then we have the destroy here, which goes to the server. And then it goes to a multicast one. And then it runs the destroy. And that's done. And that's pretty much how you do a destroy. That's pretty self-explanatory here. So we save these variables. We have these two functions now to activate and destroy, which this activate will now run an internal function here, which we can override in child classes to do whatever our activation logic is. So whether or not we want to determine a hit actor from a projectile or doing an AOE, we can simply just do it here. And we don't have to worry about whether or not it's replicated because it already is. The function will already be replicated. So for example, we can go take a check at the projectile here. So the projectile, I don't think I had a collision sphere last time. So I added a collision sphere. Made sure all the presets were all correct. Set it to how I like it. Then in the event graph, on the component overlap, we can simply say, set this other actor that, we're, that we want to just save. So whatever our current hit actor is, right? Whatever current overlapping. And then we just call the activate, the interface version of the activate here, which will then call our child function here that we can override in this menu because it'll the this um this function here the activate here will be overwritten in the child so we can just call that and now this other actor we're actually using it in this activate function and so now this activate obviously this parent call is um, redundant because it, the parent call doesn't actually have anything. But basically, this is just this little piece of logic is just going to go through. It's just going to check to see if the other actor is not uh, the other actor that we're hitting is not itself. Uh, it was a weird little debug thing. I realized that it was actually hit the sphere conclusion was actually hitting itself. Weird. Um, I don't have the ignore self here implemented yet, so. Right now, it's just checking to see if um, 
if it's not equal, if the current overlap is not equal to our our owner, basically. And we're just going to make sure that our instigator here that we set up on the server side is valid. And if it is, we will go ahead and take it. We'll pass in a base damage from our structure that we saved. We'll take in the damage class, and we will apply that damage to the other actor. And here I can just, I'm just printing it out, and then we can call that interface method of the destroy. And that'll handle all the replication for us. So over in the player character, we override the event, or we just do the event here. We just grab the event, any damage, and we'll just print out what we hit. So this will just print out basically whatever it hits on the server side. So it'll say damage dealt, destroy the actor, and then it'll deal the damage, and it'll print out the string. So let's see. So if we fire it up, you can see if I fire it, we just get the pew, because that's just spawning in the projectile. And then when we hit it, we get damage dealt, and then we can see what we hit. There you go. Now I think it, since it's not hitting like walls and stuff, I think that there might need to be some changes. Um, I know it doesn't look very good because of the material, but mm, we're just trying to get it to damage players, so I think that's okay. We'll probably need another interface just to check that the other actor is a damageable, in which case we can find out which which actor we can actually damage. Okay. Now let's move on to a... I guess we'll do health. I mean, it's the most simplest thing to do. Also, a quick note, too. Um, just jumping in here. Uh, I did create a spawn ability at the end of this uh, activate this component activate. So on our action component. I did make the, the change here. At the end, to spawn ability, which basically just takes in the owner here which we can get from our properties which i added as a i think i added I, did i mention that i added a pawn to the properties so you just return self off this action user and now you just get the character well either way um properties are there so when we go through and we tri activate this ability for the component off the montage right we grab the then we grab the action data and then the ability data and then all the way into the damage types we go into a spawn ability why I'm mentioning this is just to make symmetry because we have the trigger montage for the one side of the component and now we have the act or the actual spawn the ability on this side but this side we don't have it going to really anywhere it's just spawning an interactor doing the cast and then doing that set that we need for our damage type data and then the instigator here which is actually going to be our pawn that we pass through so i just wanted to make a quick note here about that and that's how we're doing that so this that's everything here is happening on server side so that's why a lot of these things too are server side where we don't have to do multicast our multicast tends to be updating variables so it's not really been necessary know because we're not really broadcasting any data we're just spawning things and spawning things don't t doesn't tend to happen on client side so health component right <laughs> let's go so a little work later yeah a little work it was annoying trying to debug through this i decided that in our damage in the damage here i'm going to actually extract the properties into its own separate structure so this is where it's in our damage properties for our damage data, right? We're going to have the damage class and then the damage properties. Damage properties will have like the number of hits, the damage each hit will do, and then the hit cooldown. Now I know we have two base damages. I feel like we can probably do some like multiplier or something down the line with stats. It's fine. And then each hit cooldown, so the cooldown between each stat hits. Pretty easy. Now I did create a new component. It's called the health component. And this is going to attach onto whatever we're going to be using. So this takes in an interface. 
call the interface has apply damage type. It has a handful of these uh, inputs, and these all match up to the when the event apply damage. So over and when we add it to the character, you can see health component is attached here, and then when we event any damage or whenever we do damage, we can build this functionality out a little bit more. But we have the basic here of applying the damage. Now what exactly does our health component do? So the health component actually takes in the damage type and then searches the database or data asset for each damage, bonds the actor because you know the damage is tied to a class. So in this case in our damage we have let's say physical damage for example. And this takes in a base ability damage. You might be thinking, wait a second, ability? Yeah, we already have all the replication built. Might as well use it. We just have to do a bit of a, we just have to build out basically the other side of it. Because one side we used for the damage type when we first apply, when we first like deal the damage. And then the ability on the second side, basically, is going to handle the damage. So it's a two for one we're getting. So obviously the property is here for this basic uh, damage. I said one hit, uh, 50 damage, cooldown of 0.1. Now let's see this ability damage actually, because it was, it did, we'll come back to the component because it's necessary to know this background of what, what this looks like. So there has been some changes to the interface here. And now we have this set damage properties data. So this will take in our properties data structure. This will take in an instigator, which is an actor reference, and then a hit actor. So this basically goes, so the first way, so this will go from our projectile to our hit actor, basically is what it's saying, with these properties. And so when we implement this now, in our base ability, because that's where we want to do this, because all of our replication is going to be dealt, dealt with in our base ability, and then uh, when we do like the activate uh, functions, we replicate them automatically. So here I, I implemented it, and this is just a server side call that we send send this data to. So we send the data here, and we just set up a couple of these variables. We set the damage data, the properties data, we set the instigator, and then we set the hit actor. Now we set these variables because this is acting as a damage object now instead of a instead of like an abil an actual ability. So here we're just going to do a server call to set this data. The clients don't really need to know about this data. That's why I'm putting it in the in the server side. If the clients need to know about it, something like health or something, you know, you want to display it on the UI. That's probably when you'd that's when you'd want to multicast the update for the health. So when we do that now, that's basically the only change I made here is to make that to the server call. And it does look very similar to when we do the type data. And that's the whole point. It's basically just a mirrored version of one with, you know, the activate and the destroy in between. I also did rename this to do activation because I, I think activate here was a little confusing. So do activation. So when you activate it, you can do the activation. Now the damage actor that we're actually applying here is slightly different. It's here we are saving a couple of variables. We're not overriding any of these interface methods because we don't need to. We are overriding the do activation. And the do activation here, parent call is redundant, but I made it a child class so it automatically pops up. The hit counter gets, res we have a hit counter and we have a timer handle. So the timer is for how many hits you have, obviously. Um, and basically this just resets the hit counter, sets the timer, and then saves the timer. And then this timer actually, um, this is actually a, spe this is a different way of doing a timer. This is doing it by signature. And it's just, it's basically doing the same thing as the, if you put this into a custom event. But this is more like a string identifier. So this is actually going to call apply ability damage. 
which is going to go down here and apply this function. Now this function, as you can see with this event, does not it, it won't be taking in any inputs. This is just like a call that we're going to run consistently, which is fine because we already going to save the hit counter. And so that's fine. And we're going to save all that parent data that we get when we first initialize it. So we can go in here, we can set this up as a timer for this for this abil uh, ability, right? Apply the ability damage. Now when we apply the ability damage, all we're doing here, grabbing the grabbing the properties, checking the hit counter. It, if it's if it doesn't need to hit anymore, you just destroy it. Otherwise, you apply the damage. Now the damage, when we set this up as the damage actor, the hit actor is the whatever you're hitting. And then the instigator in this case is actually going to be the projectile. And that's set up in the health component when we spawn it. So when we set up, well, when we call the interface call for the ability actor set damage properties, we have the hit actor in the instigator. And so then when we save the instigator, it's the projectile. And then we increment the hit counter and we're good to go. And since this stuff is all replicated, naturally, we don't have to worry about any of that other replication business. So then after that, after, like, when we apply the damage, right, in the health component, this is the, this is not the actual component. Let's go take a look at the component now, see how that works. So like I said before, the health component has one, basically one, one function here. I haven't actually built out the full uh, the full functionality here because I feel like I want to do something with stats and uh, I don't really feel like adding a stat system right this second. So for the meantime, we will just be printing out some strings. So same format here as we've basically been doing the entire time. We have this event. Right, we have the interface call of the event. I'm just gonna actually apply apply damage type. I'm going to comment this so it looks better. Here we go. So this event apply damage type, right? We're gonna pass in all the damage data. We're also gonna so we're gonna send it to a server call, which will get the owner of the component, because that's the one we just want to keep track of the owner for both damage and other prop other things here just in case so in this case we make a server call run on server reliable they're basically all that so we send it to the interface check the validity if it's not valid we'll just print it out and in this case when it's not valid it's going to be in the in the damage mode when it's valid it's going to be in the damage type mode so this is a way we can kind of control it We'll go through. I did make a small change to the damage, uh, damage classes, and instead of a single um, data asset with a with a string ID, I made it an array. I figured if you want to apply multiple damages, multiple damages, you can do that easily with the, with it this way. So we'll loop through those damages we put in the damage class, right? And then it'll update to. It'll run through the loop and it will find each of the damage IDs. Spawn those actors. Now, I didn't set up a spawn, a spawn transform yet. So uh, that's something to do in the future. I don't know how I really want to handle this. That's the thing. Because if it's just damage. Then sometimes it doesn't really matter where you hit. I mean, yeah, the hit location matters, but only for some types. Some types like um, bullets, maybe you, you won't really need to spawn anything, anything graphical. And then we set the properties here, so the hit actor will be this owner that we passed in, and then the instigator will be this uh, this projectile damage causer, or well, it's going to be the damage causer from the server side, but it's that. 
we'll take the damage properties and we'll pass it into the damage properties now and then we'll activate it so when this is in damage mode it will spawn an actor which will be the damage actor set those properties and then now the damage actor on the actor itself won't have a damage type class so to go to this print string and so I set up this damage to have a base damage of 50, a hit of 1, and a cooldown of 0.1. So let's see that in action. So if I run up, we still have the projectiles. So if I press 1 here, you can see 50. We're good to go. Mm -hmm. So now in the... If we wanted to apply, let's say, hits of 10... With the cooldown, we'll we'll keep you a point one. We can see that this will hit, and we'll see boop 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 fifty fifty fifty. So now all we have to do is off of this not valid in the component. Mm, where is it? In this health component, we can now do various stats, and we have the damage, and we have things to do. So yeah, now all we have to do is add some variables to check maybe for health and then destroy the actor if the health falls below zero or something, you know. Pretty much it. And of course, depending on the way you do it, if you do an addition, you, your subtraction will now be a healing damage. It will now be a heal. And because the damage types I made, or the damage... Was it no no in the damage types here? These damage types now return a list. So these damage types we can now apply multiple ones over here. Well this is in the child class, but in the parent class it's uh right over here. With zero. I mean it's a parent class, so what do you expect? So yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, I hope you guys found that helpful, and maybe it gives you an idea of how to do it for yourself. Or maybe it gives you, I don't know, some inspiration. But, uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.